Who influenced you as a director? Where did you learn? Uh, like, wh what are some things where, you, as a director, you're like, okay, I've got to do that, or, you know, that well, I really like. Well, Alan McInnes was the first person who, do you know Alan McInnes? He mm -hmm. runs, yeah, YPT now, and he was yeah. at, I, I know him from Edmonton, from, from, from oh, high yeah. school, actually. Oh, really? He was a few years older than me, and he was in, um, uh, acted in, he played the lead in a production of Boys in the Band at Walterdale in 1977, I think, oh. in Edmonton, which was really groundbreaking. Uh, he was the first person, when he was working at ATP, we were talking one day, and he said, I, I, never, I never worry about how the actors say anything. All I worry about is their objective. Mm -hmm. What do they want? And I went, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. And Derek Goldby, Derek's technique, you know, Derek's way of moving people, of telling a story uh, visually. Bray Murray, the way, that, the way that he works with people, the way he is so specific with what he wants from them. I mean, I take something away from every good director I work with mm -hmm. and, and integrate it into my toolbox, you know, mm -hmm. that, that for me directing is, I don't do it as much because it's, a, it's the hardest job in the world. Mm -hmm. directing, a, directing a play, directing a film, directing a TV show, like it really is the most difficult, time-consuming uh, job that one can do in the entertainment industry, and I find it takes a lot out of me to do it. And you have to deal with so many personalities. You're dealing with actors, you're dealing with technicians, you're dealing with designers, you're dealing with producers, you're dealing with money people. You know, I, I, like I get a point where I'm like, get away from me, but mm -hmm. when it's really happening for me, I really enjoy it. I mean, when the cast understands what I'm doing, when I know what I'm doing, when the script will support what I'm doing, mm -hmm. it's, it's an amazing experience. And it, it really does work a different kind of my brain than writing does. Pencil and paper, final draft, movie magic. What do you use? Uh, Trelby. Trelby? Trelby is the it. free movie magic uh, program on the computer. Trelby. Yeah, like Trilby with an E. Okay. And it's just as good as Final Draft, and it's free. And I bought Final Draft about 15 years ago, and then I went to update it about five years ago, and it wouldn't let me do it. They wanted to buy a new one, and I said, screw that. <laughs> I'm not paying them more money for a format. Of course and, you uh, and did it. But no, I haven't written with... I never really wrote with pencil and paper. You know, the most, I took typing in grade 9 mm. in 1972 in Edmonton and was the only boy in the class, which was a, a real object of derision at the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I knew I wanted to be a writer, and I knew I had to learn how to type if I was going to be a writer. And it was probably the most useful class I took in school. Right. And I, and I type fast, mm -hmm. as fast as I can think. Mm -hmm. not, not always very accurately, but the typing there. And I miss the muscularity of my typewriter. I miss that. Mm -hmm. that um, in the click you know, of the class. Yes, that very, mm -hmm. uh, what's the word I'm looking for, when you can feel things, tactile mm -hmm. sense of doing it. But... It was a nightmare to make changes. I don't know if you ever wrote a play with a typewriter, but it was cut and paste and white out and all this stuff, whereas on the computer, it's so beautiful. You just keep yeah. rewriting and rewriting. And I think mm -hmm. when I started writing on a computer, my writing got better because I was more willing to rewrite what I was doing. It wasn't so work intensive. I used to be a purist. I was like, no, I'm using a typewriter because it forces you. This computer, it's too easy to edit. It forces you to be you know, pristine with your words. And after a while, I was like, oh, screw it. I'll never go back to that again. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you have any rituals when you sit down to write? Is there any space you have to be in? Is there? Yeah, I have to do absolutely everything else that has to be done before I write. I've got to mm -hmm. eat, I've got to work out, I've got to masturbate, I've got to call some people, I've got to smoke some pot, I've got to take a walk, I've got to go shopping. Mm -hmm. I've got to do everything except write until everything is finally done and I, mm -hmm. I have no choice but to sit down and write. And so I sit down and write. But, um, Again, I'm not really precious about it. Like, if mm -hmm. I have to write, if I've got a deadline, I get up in the morning and I start writing and I write until I have to finish. But if I don't have a deadline, I'm much more organic about it. I don't write every day. I mean, I write something every day because I'm on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I don't write on a project necessarily every day. This is one of the most controversial questions I have. What do you define as a draft? What to you is the difference between one draft and another? that if I give it to someone else to read who mm -hmm. doesn't know it, if they will see the difference. You know what I mean? If, if mm -hmm. they've read the first one mm -hmm. and they don't know what I'm working on or whatever and I give them the second one and they see a, a major difference in it, then it's a draft. If there's not, then it's um, one of those things between drafts, those interstitial kind of mm -hmm. uh, draft ets or whatever where we're making minor changes. But I, don't, I mean, it's, it's hard to say because I write a lot of drafts of things. Like I'll write 12, 14, it's not unusual to have 15 drafts, but the last six of them will be very minor kind of, the casual reader would not see the difference in what's going on for the mm -hmm. most part. Or like a polish.
I started uh, doing my drafts like 1.2, 1.4, 2.3, depending mm -hmm. on how many changes have been made in them. How do you list your files? Yeah, so on, when you're saving a file, what do you write? Like, okay, I'm writing uh, Poor Superman. Uh, 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 draft 1, 1.2, 1.5, 1. 1.8, 2, right. like that, okay. and just find out you know, what the latest one is. Do you ever have a problem where you, like, you swear to God you printed out the right draft at the first day of rehearsal or for, you know? Not the first day of rehearsal, but, you know, the first five years I had a computer. I was always writing on some earlier draft that I had saved that I hadn't, that I'd saved separately or whatever. So I was writing on an earlier draft that there was a later draft that never made it on to mm. and that kind of thing, or I didn't save it properly. There was a lot of that shit going on. Oh, do you ever have a hard drive die on you and you just lose everything? I had a hard drive die on me when I was writing uh, a play that I had a commission for and a deadline in Australia looking at the screen where one corner of the screen went black mm -hmm. and then it spread like ink over the entire screen and the whole laptop died oh, right then and there. Wow. It's dramatic. And, and the, everything on it was lost, including the f almost full draft of that play that I'd been working on oh that God. I now had to start from scratch again. Oh, I actually, uh, I spent a thousand dollars getting a hard drive back. Yeah, th no, we tried that. I would have paid five thousand dollars to get that hard drive back. <sighs> it wasn't happening.